running from zombie. This zombie is sure dumb. He don't know how to squat. You come over here, Mr. Zombie. I'll let you go inside this door when you're ready. There we go. Now Chris goes to the door. At the last second, like an epic hero. This is the story of Chris Redfield. Hmm, just met some dead guy. Nothing suspicious over there, Jail and Whisker. Yup, yup, yup. Might as well go back to the base. Woohoo! Since I. Well, yeah. Wesker. Wesker's just a howdy hi there, down about a cowboy. So he goes to the door, and suddenly. Wesker? Jill? Chris is all by himself. He suddenly finds a gun. What should I do with this here gun? In the mansion where I met someone really kind of scary, creepy. Hmm, I know what to do. Might as well. Uh, look, look. Yeah, why is the menu? I better throw away this. Uh, I can't throw that away. I forgot to put in my thing. I'll pick up the gun definitely, or do another no gun playthrough. Take the handgun? Yes, yes. Can Jack you listen? Yes. Hmm. I could go that way, but now I'll go this way. It's the way you're supposed to go. And to the first room, back to the dining hall where we just met the zombie, because that's the most obvious thing to do, but the zombie doesn't come until you go into a certain area. Okay, so now I can equip the gun. Sorry, Mr. Knife, you're going as soon as I get a chance to get rid of you. Okay, so Chris is running, Chris is running, Chris... You are running fast, Chris. You are on top of this. Through the door into destiny. And I agree with Ali's comment. Okay, so the zombie is over there. If I go over there, I'm screwed. But if I, in fact, I even hear him right now. But if I go over here, everything's fine. He doesn't look at me until I look at him, really. Over here, we find a videotape. Yeah, and take the videotape, even though you don't really use the videotape at all until the very end of the game, which I always thought was kind of weird. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I guess. Throw has been cut out. Now, this next room is an interesting room, because it looks very deadly the first time you go in it, but it's not until later in the game it's actually deadly. So... Da 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 da! Doo doo! Doo doo! Sneaking through this house! Doo doo! Doo doo! Where the bell? Wesker! Chris! I always thought it'd be hilarious if he just screamed out Chris inside this game, but this game has lots of memorable quotes, even though not as many as the original. The remake had somewhat better voice acting. In fact, it was more than somewhat of a lot better voice acting than the original. But, at the same time, it loses some of that charm. Even though this game is absolutely terrifying, even though surprisingly I'm not scared so far. So up the stairs we go to the clock, and then we go up another pair of stairs. This next room is where we really encounter our first enemies in the game. They're actually threatening most for, for most players. There's another zombie you can meet if you take the other path, but, you know, it's just one zombie. Plus, again, I have to do a head for him. But this is the first area that's really deadly in the game. I'm also afraid because there's a crimson head that's right there who comes into play. Right now I seem to be fine though. There's the first zombie in the game really that can grab you. That one's kind of like a surprise one. But you need to come in here to grab this arrow. Okay, now they're telling me how to examine the items. But in hard mode there's a zombie around this corner, but since this is easy, nothing. This door you don't go through for a while, but we can't go through this door. First, before we go through this door, I want to just, for starters, I think there's supposed to be ammo or something laying around here. I think I actually missed the ammo. I think it was right next to the zombie that I ran past. But I want to examine this. Examine. Ooh, arrow. Deadly arrow. So I click it, examine. The arrow head looks like it can be removed. Oh my god, arrowhead. I don't know what he does with the stick of the arrow. He obviously shoves it somewhere or drops it somewhere. I don't know. Point is, he now has that key. And we go on to this next area. We unlock it. And now the fate of doors and mansions unfold as they go through the mansion and the story is untold. Anyways, though, Zombie is having a fun time. You can see his shadow right now. He sees me. He's like, Oh, hungry, hungry hippo! And that means that we're in a bad spot. Anyways, though, we, this is a defense dagger. If we get grabbed by a zombie, we have a defense item so that we can stab them in the head. Not only does it do super effective damage to make them not come into a crimson head later in the game, but it also provides you from the game what will not really hurt from the zombie. 
Very useful item. But try to be careful with it because you use it automatically. Let's go to playing in manual mode, in which case you use it when you want to. So now that we got the arrowhead, we are heading outside. Outside we go, outside we go. And where do we stop? Nobody will know. Okay, so over here we have the door that leads to the outside neighboring area. I love the outside area, but I like the other area better because you don't spend enough time in this game outside because it's all centered around the mansion and the areas around the mansion. But there's only this outside area and one other one. This one's rather small, though. In fact, it's so small, it's barely even outside. But hey, I guess it is outside. Because we are outdoors getting fresh air! Anyways, what we need to do over here is that we go over here. We see Chris in a nice little sexy angle. Now we have to put the arrowhead with a tomb engraved in that Cupid thing. Seriously, why is there Cupid encrypted on a tombstone? I mean, I, I don't see where the sense of that lays, but the point is, though... Cupid may be dead, just as Ali was just saying. And we go down into this really long, creepy-looking stairway. I know what happens, like, by heart during the first, like, few minutes of the game. It's after that I start getting more scared, usually. So far, actually, I'm surprised I'm not scared. I must be in a very daring mood, and I haven't realized it. However, though, I am having fun. So over here, we see a book of some sort. We pick it up. A book is fitted perfectly in the indention. We take the Book of Curse. Which is obviously a really bad idea to take a book that's called the Book of Curse, but we take it anyway, you know, right? And besides that, there's a freaking coffin hanging above our which has blood dripping out of it and chains, uh, chain it down. That's obviously not a bad sign of anything. We examine the book, we examine the side of the book, you see there's uh, like a, uh, I mean the back of the book, you see there's a key inside the book. You take the key from the back cover, you remove it, then it opens up the book and it reads the scripture for you now. Let's read the Book of Curse, at least the phrase that we read out of it. The Four Mask. A mask that speaks no evil. A mask that smells no evil. A mask that sees no evil. A mask that cannot speak, smell, or see evil. When all four fall into place, evil will awaken. And trust me, when we get all four of those masks eventually, it will go into a hellstorm. But we need to do it, because there's no way to escape if we don't get the four masks and put them on these four uh, mannequin things. See this four mask? One of them has no eyes, one of them has no mouth, one of them has no ears, one of them has none of them. So we need to get the four masks inside the mansion and bring them here. Each of them have a challenge that is related to speaking, or in other words, noise, le hearing, in other words, listening. And then one of them, I think the last one is kind of more indentation and smell, then one of them challenges all of them at once, which is a boss-type creature thing. But we won't be going there yet. What we're first going to do is go back inside the mansion to experience horrors beyond our imagination. Or in other words, zombies. Yeah. But back in the day, in 1995, 6-ish, 95, I believe it was, when Resident Evil originally came out, horror games like this were not common. In fact, there were a few things. Like, there was Alone in the Dark and Sweet Home, which was the game that Capcom made previously for the NES that inspired Resident Evil, but it never came to be past then. So, beyond all that and all the fun stuff and new lightning, there really wasn't any horror games to really speak of, like Resident Evil which is create the survival horror name, which little people know was actually a phrase created by Resident Evil. Because the original Resident Evil, right when the game began, it says, prepare to enter the world of survival horror. Which was the term that they used as kind of a gimmick for this, but in the end it kind of caught on, and now everyone calls this genre survival horror. This door is locked right now. What was the door we needed? An emblem of armor. Okay, actually, yeah, this door you can go through pretty early. This is also where we first meet the guy who gets bitten by a snake. I forget his name. He's a really nice guy, he saves you, depending on what you do in the game, he either dies right there, or he saves you later from sharks. But whatever the case, though, he's a nice guy, but he throws his life away so easily. Seriously. Too bad. Okay, so if we were playing on hard mode, there'd be zombies in this hallway, but since we're on easy, nothing, nothing. We're all free to go. Now, the first time I played this game, I had no idea what this piece of wood was for for the longest time, but now that I know I'm, like... Based upon myself, we're not realizing it sooner because it's actually more obvious than I let myself to believe. Anyways, though, we go through here to enter inside. Uh, basically, uh, I guess it's a study room. There's a chessboard. I think there's some hints in here about some stuff, but chessboard. But the thing that's really, really important in here that we need right now is the dog whistle. Unfortunately, my item pockets are full, so I'm going to combine these two green herbs to make a super green herb or something. And we go over here and get the dog whistle because that's what we need above all else. Will you take the dog whistle? Yes, I will. Da 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 da. Now they tell me a memo. Anyways, it's a memo. It, it's a hint as well as a story. Today, Sir Spencer told me to hide something where no one could find it. 
Well, I had this idea. I figured if I could somehow have it protected by a dangerous animal like the vicious canine that lives here, no one would be able to get near it. As far as I can tell, the mud is always hanging around the second floor balcony on the west side of the terrace. And he ought to come running at the sound of a dog whistle, because, you know, it's obviously not a hint at something. Anyway, let's read the rest of the story. This is where you come in. The thing is, I reckon you're the only person that can get near that damn dog without risking a serious mauling. Which means only you can pull this collar on him, or put this collar on him. The object that Sir Spencer wants hidden is concealed inside. You're the only person I can trust with this. Of course, you'll get something out of it as well. Remember that certain item that you've always wanted to get a hold of? Well, in exchange for that of your services, it just might be able to. I might just be able to get it for you. This would work out well for the both of us. <laughs> they don't even specify what the item is. Ha ho! You are getting duped. You can't. Okay, I'll, I'll get the ammo in a second. I first want to deliver and get this map out of my pockets. There's other stuff in here, but I plan to come back to this room. Now, here's one of the dirtiest tricks in the very beginning of the game. You come through this door, and immediately, if you aren't running forward, the zombie will grab you. So, I fell for it the first time. Just run. He won't grab you, but if you do otherwise, he will. He's a deadly bastard, let me just say that much. Anyways, we run over here, and there's a door right here. And in this door, we can finally put the piece of wood against this to form a map, and then we can use the map to kind of, uh, like, scale the second floor. It's something which I did not realize the first time I played the game, because you see there's a fireplace right here. Chris has the ability to start off with a lighter, so he uses the lighter, sets the fireplace, then when you examine a piece of wood, it says lion's car on the leaf, you put the wood, use it, and you put the wood here, it starts forming a magical map after sizzling hotness. You take it back up, there's a map of Mansion 2, blah blah blah, take it, yes we'll take the map. Basically here's this, uh, yeah, here's all we've been to on the first floor, because we don't have a map of the first floor yet, though I know where it is. And here's the second floor. The doors that are white we have been into. The doors that are red we have been into. And I believe that also means there is danger in those rooms. I don't quite know if that's true, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And, you know, the rest of it is just the areas that we have not been into. He got the map of the mansion's second floor. Cool story, bro. Okay, so anyway, so there are a lot... Of, uh, this door is just a loop around back to where we were previously. It's locked an emblem of a helmet. It's actually just a loop around. It's a very useless door. But it's nice to have open some nice for nice shortcuts. Uh, over here are a lot of herbs, but we have no need for that many herbs right now. Especially since I don't even have a memory card right now, so I'm just kind of playing this until I get bored. So, you know, what the hell, why not? So, we walk, we talk, we turn around the corner and get prepared for survival horror zombiness. Now watch out, though. The zombie will come back to get us. The zombie hears us. God damn it. Okay, I'm gonna run for the ammo. What? There's no knob. That is a cheap move, Capcom. Alright. The zombie's gonna get back up, and then we have to shoot him some more. It's good to get the zombies out of here, out of the way early, in my opinion. Because, you see, this is an area that you'll be going through multiple times inside the game. All hunters will infest it later. To get rid of all the zombies now, you won't have to deal with them later in the game. Fucking, okay, I think he's, oh no, he's not dead, he's not dead, fucking A. That was a close one. Alright. So we managed to, there's another zombie that's going to be coming up the stairs in just a moment. I'm thinking I should maybe take care of him now, but at the same time he can kind of wait. He's not that important right now. If I just leave, we'll be back downstairs by the time I leave. Right now, he's just... Oh, wait, no, no, I see him. So, yeah, I have enough time to take care of him. Do I have enough ammo to take care of him, though? Unfortunately, I do not think so. But I will try anyways. Come on, get a headshot, get a headshot. If you can get this right, you can get a headshot pretty easily. Got it. No headshot for me, but I did take him out on two shots. That's, that, that, that's great. Come on, mister... He's wearing a tuxedo. What a pleasant man. He's up, he's up. Okay, shoot, shoot. You know, Chris is the guy, the guy he shoots, asks questions later. I only have one bullet left. I'll have to knife him after this, and the knife in this game is supremely useless. Wait, is he dead? Give it like five seconds. If he doesn't get up, then he's dead. Five, four, three, two, one. I should listen to Zombie Land. I need to remember the double tap. <laughs> Anyways, though, this door is open, which means I can do a loop around, because the other door apparently doesn't have a doorknob. How useless is that? I also need to burn the bodies immediately, because if I don't, they'll be turned crimson heads in about an hour in real life time. 
And while I'm not playing for a really long time, actually, you know what? I'm not playing for a really long time. Screw them. I won't be around long enough for them to turn to crimson heads. So screw that idea. I don't need to do that. That's just useless time wasting and do something that won't even matter since I'm not playing this for a long round. So we got some ammo, and so we don't have to reload in real life because that takes longer. Just combine it on our menu. Anyways, we turn around the corner, we listen to a saxophone or something. Uh, here's another diary. It talks about banality and medical herbs and how you can combine them, but that's all useless to us right now because I already know all about that. Anyways, we run past these zombie bodies. If if I was going to be saving and playing this on a lawn run, then I would burn the bodies right now because honestly, that is very dangerous. Two zombies on the stairwell, that would kill me down the road. But I'm not planning to play for a full hour. So, you know what, screw that. I'm just going to the item box and put away my knife. Because honestly, while the knife is very useful, I'm not planning to play so long that I'd actually have to start using it to reserve ammo. I could be an ammo hog, and no one would care. Okay, so there's the item box. To the item box! In the item box, we put away our knife. We don't need a knife, I'll just put away my green herb. You know, I'm I, you start, they give you some free first aid sprays on normal mode, so... I'll take that, I will take the handgun magazine. Okay, so take the handgun magazine. There we go. That's cool. That's all we need. We are actually good. There's actually one other thing which I forgot to do earlier. We need to examine this key I have. Examine it. And then you look on the back side and you find out I have a key that is engraved with a sword. So I have a sword key. I forgot to do that earlier, but I did it now. We're not going to save because there's no point of memory card inserting into my Wii right now. This next door is really annoying. I forget how many times you can go through it, but you only go through it a certain amount of times before it breaks, and then this door can never be used again. But hey, no, it's a gimmick. So let's see. This doorknob looks like it's ready to fall apart. Apparently we can't use our knife or fork or anything to turn the doorknob after it's broken, or even break the door open. Chris proved he can punch boulders in Resident Evil 5. Why can't you do anything here? I mean, anyway, so go through it anyway? Yes. And the mysterious door opening animation. Now, there's a few zombies in this next room, but honestly, it's just best to kind of skip them. Because they take a while to get to you. So, if you want to wait there patiently and shoot zombies, be my guest. But honestly, they're better as regular zombies than Crimson Heads. This next area is an area which gets scary, in my opinion, later in the game. And here, you find a shotgun. As well as, if you pull the shotgun without getting the fake shotgun to replace it, there's a roof that'll try to crush you. Barry saves you in the regular game. Jill's story is a little bit easier when playing Chris's because I just enjoy it better. It's got that more of that sense of lonesomeness. And while the story might not be exactly as interesting, I do like his gameplay experience more. Now there's a zombie in a bathtub in there as well as a key. I, I guess I'll do it just for the lols. Hello, Mr. Zombie, taking yourself a nice little bath inside the bathroom of a zombie bath uh, in a zombie house. I'll be there in just one moment to take the plug out. Mm -hmm. Chris is here to give a zombie a time of his life. Take out that dirty water, you dirty boy Chris. He unplugs the plug, blah bunk. And suddenly... Not so suddenly. There we go. And... Anyway, so the zombie's all sloppy, and he's nice and fresh after a nice, cleansely bath. He doesn't come out if you don't pull the plug, though. But he takes a second to get up, so we can just grab the key and get out of here before we leave. Because if you kill him, there's not really a point. So we run up here, we grab the key. Will you take the small key? Yes, I will. And I'm going to turn around and get out of here before he grabs me. Yep, we made it, and we managed to avoid dying in any way, shape, or form. Ironically, there's an area we can use a small key almost immediately. Right over here to the left of that door, we have an area that can use a small key. You might be able to lock it using the old key. Use the old key? Yes. You use the old key, but we won't be going through there yet because there's dogs over there. You know, there's going to be dogs through here, too. Now, this is an area lots of people use to show off costumes because it's probably the biggest close-up in the game you'll get to the main characters. Bad ass. Alright, next to here is one of the most famous scares in the whole entire Resident Evil series. It's so famous, in fact, that when I actually finally got to play the Resident Evil series, it didn't scare me at all because I knew it was coming. The infamous running through the silent hallway that's too quiet and the dog jumps through the window. Twice. Let's do it. There's the doggy. Doggy, doggy, dog. It's the name I should know. Doggy, doggy, doggy. There's the fucking dog. There's two on the show. Chris gonna beat down a dog to K9. Doggy, doggy, doggy. Foul. Okay, so we go in here. Two dogs chasing us on our heels. We open the door. Go. Now, we did a good turnaround. We actually, I forget what we go over there for. Uh, yeah, we get the dog whistle. That's the most important thing that we did. 
if you don't see, there's the map of the second floor inside this naked lady statue thing that's carrying the water jug. We don't need it right now, though. We'll just go on ahead, get to there, and where we actually have to go, we have to go to the second tier, or no, it's the second terrace. To get to the second terrace, basically all I have to do is go up here, da 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 do 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 Run around the corner, run around the bed. No, 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 Chris, not against the railing. I know you really love to run against railings, but it's not good for your health, man. Okay, so we open this door, and the actually, we were next to it earlier, but we just didn't have the dog whistle. There's a zombie over here to still watch out for, though, just to give forewarning. You can be a deadly bastard. Anyway, so it's this door right here. Now, there's something really dangerous about this room, because there's a zombie that can break through the door, not to mention there's a few zombies that walk up the steps. But what we actually need to do is turn around this way, and we need to go out this door. Oh, but fuck, we need an old... Ugh, I used the old key, so we need to get a second one. But there's going to be a few zombies that try to walk up these staircases. Not to mention that door is a door that can be broken open by zombies later in the game. But it, it, here's a chance to get a headshot very easily if you're able to time this correctly. There's, there's going to be like two zombies that walk up here. I also warn you, this is really important. As soon as you do this, the, there's a zombie down there that's dead and bloody. He will turn into a crimson head if you're not careful. That was like a lot more headshots than I expected, but it did not kill him. Poor innocent Chris. Anyway, so he's going to get up in a second. So we got two shots in the back of the head. He's probably dead, but give it like five seconds besides there's another zombie coming. There's actually a really interesting room over there I like a lot. It's a simple moose head puzzle, which the Resident Evil series has had many of. In other words, there's jewel eyes inside a zombie. I mean, inside a moose head. Actually, if I remember, the second zombie's around the corner, isn't he? He doesn't come up the stairs, I believe. He's around the corner. If my memory serves me correctly. Yeah, my memory did serve me correctly. So come here, Mr. Zombie. It is time to dine on your flesh. Come around the corner, slow buzz. Oh, wow, that was a one-shot kill. I feel special. Oh, wait, not a one-shot kill. I just stunned him. He's gonna get up, I think. Yep, he's up. Oh, now there's a headshot. That was cool. At least I got one on that, so... That is what happens with a headshot that also means that he can never come back as a crimson egg because I shot him in the head. Let's see if this door opens. Oh, we don't get to go into the cool room with the moose head. That's alright, though. We can go over here. And over here is a zombie out here, as well as a Sonata panel that we can play once we get another key with Rebecca. And there's also a base... When I first played this game, the first thing I did was go inside the kitchen. And I went inside the kitchen. There was a bunch of zombies in there, and that actually... That was probably a really bad idea to do, because that kitchen, you'll find out later, is one of the worst possible areas you can go into when you first start the game. But that's what I did. My first idea to go in the game, go in there, I fought a bajillion zombies, only to find out later in the game they all turned to crimson heads. That was when I found out in the game I was screwed. Okay, now the game scares is starting to get to me for some reason. I, I don't even know why. Maybe it's because I know later in the game hunters break through these windows. Maybe it's because I know in the next room there's a few more zombies. But I think all I'm going to do before I finish off... Oh, wait, I forgot. You need the armor key. Fuck. Well, over there we can see Plant 42 for the first time, besides outside. Uh, yeah, I think this is where we're going to stop off for the night. Resident Evil Remake, everyone. One of the scariest games ever. I'm just starting to get scared, so I'll talk to you all later. Adios.